Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. One of the questions we often get asked is, how do we get power to the ship, and where does that plug in, et cetera, et cetera. Most warships are designed with shore power connections, and this is the ship's uh, original, at least original to the 1980s, uh, shore power outlet. Uh, so you'll notice we have eight big 440 power lines run overhead and plugged in. So this structure can be broken down uh, and moved to whichever side of the ship you're plugged into. So everything you see on this side is mirrored on the port side as well. Uh, so this whole thing can break down, go to the other side. It just gives you a bridge to get all this stuff up and over um, so that it's not laying right here in the walkway. The battleship uses 110, 220, and 440 power, but everything coming on and everything generated by the ship is 440. There are step-down transformers throughout the ship to drop that down uh, to the lower powers needed. So earlier I said most ships have a connection like this. Not all of the war-built ships did. Uh, the Liberty ships famously were designed to go out but not necessarily come back. So they were built without shore power connections. Uh, I think that's a, a pretty interesting feature. Have you guys ever visited a Liberty ship? Both John W. Brown and Jeremiah O'Brien still sail, whether you're on the uh, west coast or east coast. Uh, and I assume they have retrofitted shore power connections at this point and don't just run their uh, generators all the time. Also located here is our telephone connection so that when we're ashore, we can plug the ship's offices into uh, land telephone lines. And it's not just a museum era thing. The ship did have telephones that could be used ashore in the ship's offices uh, during most of the ship's career. In addition to power, we've got some other hookups nearby. Red is the fire and flushing main. So this is how we flush our toilets and it backfills the uh, firefighting system. That's typically salt water when we're underway. Uh, it's probably any sort of non-potable water when you're in port. And next to it, you see a white wheel for steam. Uh, if we're plugged into shore power, we do not need to run our boilers. So we can take them all offline for maintenance. However, when we restart them, it's not the easiest thing in the world to crash start. So we can run steam through pipes like this, and this isn't the only location there is one, uh, in addition to them being port and starboard back aft, there are a couple other places too. Uh, but we can run steam from a shore plant into the ship to start our systems without having to go off of electrical power and uh, tax the grid too much with that. Not too far away, we've got a freshwater connection right here. Not too far away, We've got a freshwater connection right here within maybe 12 feet of the other uh, connection terminal. And then coming around here, we've got a connection point for JP5 or aviation gasoline and another one for fuel oil for the ship's own service. So we do not currently have any fuel oil on board. Uh, in mothballs, ships typically have about 10% fuel capacity as ballast on board. We cleaned all the tanks out when we got the ship from the Navy, so there is no fuel on board. Uh, there's no aviation gasoline on board. I've stuck my head in those tanks and they have been perfectly cleaned out as well. We do have some of our potable water lines hooked up to shore power, not the ones I showed you, but like I said, there's a couple of connection points around. Uh, we do not keep potable water in any holding tanks. We have our fire and flushing system backfilled. Um, that comes from a different place as well, not from the connection I showed you. And it basically just looks like a hose going off the ship and down onto the pier. Uh, we do not have any steam on board. Our agreement with the Navy says we are not allowed to run any of our engineering equipment. So our turbo generators creating electrical power or our turbines creative propulsive power. We cannot run any of that. It is all still encased in grease from the mothballing process. Uh, and of course, you've seen we, we've got electrical power hooked in to our shore power connectors, so we are uh, 
running the ship off of the Camden power grid. We do have some of our ballast tanks filled with non-potable water to help get the trim right on the ship. Uh, we've got a 40 millimeter gun and a boat on the port side, and that would knock us out of trim by a couple of tons. So a couple of starboard side uh, trim tanks do have non-potable water in them. Uh, it is fresh water, but it's not drinking water just because fresh water is less corrosive. And uh, so we are holding some water in something like four or five of our tanks off the top of my head. So an Iowa-class battleship has eight 1250 kilowatt per hour uh, turbo generators. So that means that we generated about 10,000 kilowatt hours, um, assuming all eight were running and usually some were down for maintenance. The museum does not use nearly that much power and I do not believe shore power could provide that much if needed. Uh, it's said that the ship generates enough power for a city of 20,000. Uh, I'm not sure we could tax the Camden power grid that much. And I know for a fact the museum couldn't afford it if we tried to. Uh, quite honestly, I'm not even sure that the power that the ship provided uh, when she was fully powered up was enough to run every system on the ship. I, I have heard people say that you couldn't run all of the carbon arc search lamps at once because they use so much power. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that we could, uh, off of the shore power, rotate a turret and radiate and a radar and do all of this other stuff, turn on a searchlight and have all the regular lights and heaters and everything else draining power from the system. Even when the ship was in service and those things were. Uh, that's why the ship has the ability to generate her own power. How many light fixtures do you have in your house? Battleship New Jersey has roughly 3,000 fixtures in the uh, 250 or so restored compartments on the ship. Well, this is less than a quarter of the total compartments, uh, and our energy bill is still exorbitant. So let us know how many fixtures you guys pay for in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from uh, businesses and private individuals like yourselves. In particular, the donations you guys give us go a long way towards being able to pay our electric bill, and we appreciate that. You can also support the museum by liking, sharing, and subscribing. That way more people find out about the channel. Thanks for watching.